Ni hao. I'm going to practice my Chinese. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be back in the industry representing Huawei. Uh, Huawei has actually been very gracious, the network BU, and gracious and warm and welcoming into their business unit as well as into their homes. My role in Huawei is actually to help continue the journey with Huawei in advancing SD and NFE principles, creating new business uh, value and so forth, and actually to contribute back into the community. The goal, of course, is to help us accelerate creating new services in the industry as well as putting it in a cost-efficient manner. I want to thank actually my partner in China, Bill Ren, um, and his uh, colleague, um, Ben Yang, in actually helping me create this talk. So where are we today? As you can tell in this graph that everyone's familiar with, is we're actually at the open network ecosystem is actually at the height of exuberance. Unfortunately, the business challenges or revenues and so forth are not quite there yet. The ecosystem isn't mature, and the business models, models have not caught up to this exuberant level. We're still at the chasm, before the chasm, in trying to create rapid revenue growth. The SDN control arena, as everyone's familiar with, is actually pretty much productized. Um, products are getting rolled out, and hopefully we're now in a product life cycle where we can actually now get into the increasing of revenue growth. But our real challenge is, is a healthy community, a healthy community where users and carriers and vendors actually participate well together. Three areas. What's the role of a community? The community to basically work a common framework, the users bringing in real use cases that are going to go into production, and vendors creating high quality products and end-to-end -end solutions. So I like to take each one of these on their own. So what's the community role? So as a lot of people know, I actually was part of the inception of a lot of the SDN NV principles here. And I am really amazed at how far we have come. The few of us, think about it, just a handful of us started this. Actually, we were in the orange um, offices in San Francisco, whatever number of years ago, I've lost track, um, just trying to figure out how do we get the industry focused on NFE. And so that's where we created the inception of Etsy's GNFE. And it's just amazing, based on the long nights, the, the, the constant discussions or fights, <laughs> and the actual changing, exchanging of ideas rearranging ideas, rearranging architectures to basically get to where we are today. And a lot of the things that you've seen getting deployed, a lot of the open source um, organizations getting created, are actually a lot of the ideas started, I think, from the Etsy's GNFE organization we started. So we've done a lot. We've accomplished a lot. But we still have a lot of challenges today. We still have too many similar projects in different domains. We didn't have a single common end-to-end framework with closed loop um, control last year. But in 2017, as you can tell, things have changed. I think we've learned a lot through um, the different participations. We might have taken a little bit longer than what we should have before, but at least we're learning. OPNFE is basically has a role now that's becoming more of an integrator, CICD type of um, environment. Open O and, o and Open Ecom have merged into ONAP. So now we have an end-to-end framework with closed loop control. And actually, we also now have DPDK and ODP converging. And that, again, is another example of just a few of us. I mean, it was like maybe three of us starting this, where we got ODP and DPDK to converge and work with each other. And so now we have Venki from Intel and Bob Monkman from ARM actually working together, which a few of us would know. That was a great feat right there. So we look forward to actually, as we, we start implementing more and more of these different open source pieces and components, we look forward to more consolidation, because I think it's obvious there are certain areas that need to consolidate more. And of course, we're, Huawei is actually um, going to be collaborating and working with the industry and helping us get more efficient. So what's the operator's role? So the operator's role is to bring real use cases to the community that they are going to put in production. It is critical that we go beyond slideware, beyond live trials, into production. 
We need to focus on end-to-end -end solutions versus just technology, which solve real business needs, creating new services and obviously providing new revenues. We need to do it much more quickly than what's happening today. We need to go from field trial to production much more quickly. The faster we move into production, I personally believe that the faster the open source consortiums will be more effective and useful, and I believe faster innovation. So Guru's talk yesterday, or yesterday, Monday, um, was actually very telling. Basically, he said there was a basic, there was an, a major resource gap and a misalignment of incentives, which is slowing our progress. In the end, sort of quoting Sandra Rivera's comment from yesterday, show me the money. That's basically where we're at. We need to bring in value to our businesses, whether we're carriers or whether we're vendors, that actually bring in revenues to actually support this ecosystem. So that's probably the critical message, I think, for 2017. What's the vendor's role? To deliver high quality products and intense solutions. So in Huawei, we actually have been building our Agile controller, this is our SDN controller, based on the best in breed of open source pieces from Onus and ODL. We have actually built a lot of our different controllers, our domain controllers using the term that I guess I, cr I created a while ago, um, based on different areas. So the domain controllers that we have cover things from data centers, um, doing cloud fabric, leaf spine, um, edge uh, sites, as well as access, as well as metro, WAN, um, and so forth. So our goal is to actually continue evolving these products and to hopefully within three years deploy or sell about 1,000 controllers. So we're building products today. We have a case study that actually in, in, in China Unicom, where we provided a layer three VPN on demand interconnect between China Unicom's data centers. This is based on a VPN application providing a model driven configurator which configured the two controllers, two vendors controllers, the Huawei Agile controller, uh, MPLS controller, and the, another vendor's MPLS controller. So not only was this application configuring both through a common model, but also these controllers were backing up each other. They were not, they were not just managing their own multi MPLS um, routers. They were actually um, managing both of the routers. And so, of course, then they backed up each other. So finally, I'd like to say I hope this talk helps you feel good about what we've accomplished, because I think we've accomplished a lot. We have much more to accomplish going forward. So I encourage you to go out there, stay engaged, don't just observe, be active in the communities, and participate and figure out how to bring business value to your company as well, whether you're a carrier or whether you're a vendor. Because in the end, I think once you figure that out, you will participate more actively and make sure the open source communities are useful and effective. Shesha. Thank you.